the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus be always with you. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to receive God's holy word, the words of Jesus to Peter are striking. Get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking as God does. Terrible words, a real challenge for all of us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary, holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. 
the word of the Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. So Jeremiah gives warnings, but it's to save people's lives. He wants them to get out of Jerusalem because it's going to be destroyed. It's like the warnings that are given before the hurricanes or the fires. It's to save life. It's not to take life or just to, to do something that would be against um, life long-term or short-term. So his words are about more than simply you know, the wrong definition, the wrong catechism. And then Jesus, his warning, you aren't thinking not as God does. Because Jerusalem did not think as God does, it got destroyed. And now, that the regular cycle of news warning about the climate change. Around this time of the year, every year, they, they show us these pictures of fires and everything like that. And it becomes almost like a new normal that we expect things like this to happen. That number of acres and, and the carbon that is put up into the atmosphere is extremely important to consider. There's so many warnings that it's easy for us to have warning fatigue. Every time you turn on the TV, someone is pushing their cause, their, their group, or this injustice or that one. It can be swamped, what can be swamped out is that whole sense of the world, the climate. There's this little kid, she goes to class and she hears about global warming and all the terrible things that are gonna happen in her lifetime, and she asked her, what can I do? And they say, oh, turn off the lights in your house and you know, do some recycling. And he says, what else? And so she became like a little Jeremiah, this kid, that became her focus. And the words of Jeremiah could apply to her. Whenever I speak, I must cry out of violence. Remember that too often, this whole thing, the amazing privilege of being after World War II, the incredible development, has been based upon carbon, fossil fuels, the 
without them, we would never have developed. But here is the most insidious part of the problem. And this doctor right here, he warned Exxon, let's get into nuclear and alternative energy. Because he saw the feedback loop was too slow. And it is fiendishly complex. It's easy to see cause effect, chop down the trees, the river dies. This is much more complicated. And you could even say to California, go nuclear, cut the trees, eat goat meat, all of us, because of this. In spite of all the work of California to limit emissions, these fires cancel out all the progress that they've made. And then, when we think about who's dangerous in the world, too often we point at, well, Putin or Xi or somebody, it's Bolsonaro. He is capable of land launching into the atmosphere 13.9 gigatons of carbon if he lets the Amazon go. So deforestation accounts to 12% of carbon emissions and fires, forest fires produce as much as 25% every year. It's a huge number. This is the thing that, that strikes me. I still can't believe it. 25 years, the oceans have absorbed extra heat. The equivalent energy of 3.6 billion? How can that possibly be? And this number, 400 ppm CO2, the last time was back at 800,000 years ago. It's incredible if it's true. It's hard to accept that it's true. It's just so astounding. So we want to choose life, all of us do. And none of us wants to damage future generations. It's never been part of our plan. And so we're invited to choose life on a planetary level. That means thinking about the children's children of your children. The whole earth is a womb. And the effects of two trillion tons of carbon in the atmosphere, those effects need to be reckoned with, to be thought about. It's sometimes people without faith, they get into this and they get depressed. Faith is supposed to help us confront difficult things, sacrifices. So we're proud of our young people who choose life and go on the marches. And we need to move that up a step. Choose life for future generations to give it the same kind of impact. But we're in danger of just like getting swamped by so many issues and not having our own clarity. What's the number one issue that we need to worry about? So marches are just a tiny, tiny sacrifice for life. What's needed is a lot more. Here's the part. This is the danger. You see, politics ends up contradicting too often what people say. And then it makes you wonder, are they just saying it to get votes? Do they really believe what they're saying? You know, this, the joke there about Gore, you know, if you really believe that this is a huge crisis, well then, wouldn't that mean that your whole life would change, your whole way of living would change? And then over there, the other mountain, for all the talk about science, when they have the opportunity, this group that pushes the idea strongly of global warming and climate change, they have the opportunity to protect the nuclear waste in our country in the best possible place. And they shot it down because of short-term political gain, gain in Las Vegas. So a decision by alarmism is not ruling. California, unfortunately, is a great place to generate alarms. Hollywood, other groups like that. 
Whenever there is a, the smallest nuclear plant uh, problem, everybody gets alarmed as if the whole thing is going to you know, wipe out the planet. Here is where we have a gift to the whole world. Our Navy is the absolute expert on nuclear power worldwide. What is it, 60 years of nuclear power plants without an accident? At least. It's amazing. That aircraft carrier, the biggest one there, has only two power plants on it. And the whole aircraft carrier can run on just one plane. That's the Ford, I think it is. So we have that gift that God gave us. And, and we're supposed to rule in God's name. And that means triage too often. The problem with a lot of ecologists is that they get focused on the small thing and they miss the big thing. I saw that happening in Elko, Nevada, in the Ruby Mountains. They got all upset about bringing in goats and sheep because they said, you're going to hurt the wild goats. But then the, the foliage all grew up like this, and then a huge fire came in and wiped up the whole place, Ruby Mountains. So triage, unfortunately, is, is important. God knows future prayers. This I learned from David Johnson. He's the man there. David and Peggy were in the Dominican Republic with us on a mission trip. They didn't know that their son was on a yacht. He was repairing it, but that night he was dying on the yacht, all alone. And they were in the Dominican, not knowing what was happening. And when David comes back, he's at the airport, he finds out his son is dead. And then he goes into this, that awareness, God knows future prayers. So he's in the future, praying back in time for his son asking God to bless his son, give him the grace he needs at the last day of his life when he's all alone. That. So we do believe that God knows future prayers. And it makes us question, what are going to be the future prayers in our world? What's going to be the future prayers of children you know, 100 years from now, 200? How will they look back at us? What will they be asking God for? Climate change is fiendishly complex. It's slow moving. And the feedback systems are too slow to, observe, to really observe. And that's why it makes it probably the most difficult problem humanity has ever faced up to this point. So we pray, Jesus and Mary, how do you see climate change? How do, we, how do you see it? Are we missing something? And then those words of Jesus, you are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us proclaim together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Father of mercies, we come before you with our petitions. And we pray for Luke, for William, for Gio, Maureen, Nicole, and all of our children whose health may be vulnerable. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray that the church will serve as a model, leading us to take up Christ's cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world's policy makers will approach their mission with mindfulness of the need for global peace. We, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That students and teachers reach out to God with any and all concerns as they prepare to go back to school. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather here will find strength and support in this caring and loving community of believers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Frank Gavain, Bill Dooley, and Etta Bunny Delali, who have died recently, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for John and Jermaine Macker. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, receive these prayers and the needs of our families. Bless our country in these troubled times. Give wisdom to all of the leaders of our country. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her beloved husband, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. When we think about Father Bosch and all of the children under his care, that area where he lives, if all these computer models are getting accurate, they say that area could become uninhabitable and the people will be migrating like the world has never seen before. So let's pray for our world that has wisdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we And 
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. Keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to his banquet. Lord, I am expecting a baby, and especially the ones that have had difficulty with previous pregnancies. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the joy of the Lord be our strength this evening. Let us go in peace. Amen.